Hello everybody, welcome back to my channel. <gasps> Look at this. We've had a little bit of an upgrade. I'm using a projector. As you can see. Look, I'm using a projector to project these things on my wall. And this is the first time I'm doing it this way. So if the lighting is bad, the placement is bad, please allow me a little pause <laughs> because this is the first time I have this set up so this topic for today's video is going to be split into two parts because essentially today i'm kind of dissecting the parents of pretty little liars however i was planning this video making the notes making the script whatever i feel like the de Laurentiis family and the hastings family need their own separate video because there is so much to dissect there um so much going on i thought i'm going to split this into two videos today we're going to be covering the montgomery's the uh marins marins ashley marin yeah that sounds weird why am i saying the ashley marin Ma marin anyway and the fields family as well we're just kind of dissecting more of the parenting on the show and where it went wrong and perhaps why it made an enemy of their children and maybe why their children didn't turn out in the best way and like how their children turned out due to the parents actions and stuff like that yeah i took sociology in school so it's very interesting to me looking at um how your actions will influence another person and a lot of it is to do with parenting and seeing how parents actions might um you know have an impact on their child so i've fully dissect dissected kind of what's going on and i've not done a full timeline but i've done like through the seasons like what's kind of going on basically if you get what i mean as you can see the first family we are going to dissect is the montgomery's because i think this is an interesting dynamic um and an interesting route to, to go down so let's talk about the montgomery's <laughs> i was writing like scripts not scripts like notes for this when i say that is booklets upon booklets guys look ready i'm on the step ladder look <laughs> here i am everyone i am going to introduce the montgomery family so the parents we've got ella ella is a bit of a milf we've got byron right when i say this man is a menace yeah but when i say this man yeah ban men and these two are the parents obviously um and this is mike who is aria's brother and down here is aria so color coordination wise red equals family blue is relationships these people down here we will come to you know who these guys are anyway but if you don't we will come to them don't worry don't what they will have their time don't you worry ella i quite liked ella throughout the show she was all right she wasn't my favorite of the parents but like she was all right we've already been through byron and i don't want to waste any more of my oxygen speaking on this man and the fun fact is he's not even the worst parent on the show yeah all these people jail mike was just very annoying <laughs> mike was the character that just is like kind of there he's very whiny i don't know if any of you have watched vampire diaries but the brother and that jeremy kind of same vibes absolutely same vibes and then we have aria aria was not my favorite liar i would have found aria more cool if she was a villain like we've spoken on this channel about before but you know sadly the writers God, the writer strike do you know what i mean byron is a professor 
And this will come into play. Don't you worry about that. This will come into play. Byron and Ella got married in 1993. 33 years ago in modern day. That was very mathematical of me, actually. Um, Congratulate. I'm going to take a nap now because that's my work done. My neighbor just walked outside. Hi, girl. Don't look at me. Don't. Season one pilot episode the montgomery's have moved to iceland for a year this was the year that allison was missing so aria's like stood in front of like a mirror and yeah they've moved back to rosewood the reasons why they moved we will get into um because it does come back in a little bit i think after the disappearance the parents wanted them to get away but also there's another reason and guess who's involved that menace byron was gifted a sabbatical i had to google what this word was because i've never heard of this word in my life and like that's probably gonna sound dumb and i don't know if it's a culture thing because i have of the british origin okay but on my life i have never heard of the word sabbatical before but Google said that it's like when you're granted time off work that's like a long period of time off work, if that makes sense. Um, in my job, it's called a leave of absence. So let's just use that term. What is sabbatical for? That's just overcomplicating it. Do you know what? <sighs> so in this episode, Byron kind of goes to Ella and is like, I'm worried that me and Aria aren't going to be as close anymore. And he says that, like, things can get in the way. And, like, Ella's getting a bit, like... Mm, why? What things? And Mr. Byron. Mr. Byron. Have you got some explaining to do, Mr. Byron? Byron takes Mike and Aria to school. And once they pull up to the school, Mike gets out of the car. And... Aria stays in there and um, Byron tells her that he loves her and it was just a mistake. What was a mistake? We'll find out after the break and that like they can move on and things will be fine. So we then get a flashback, Mr. Byron. Mr. Byron, what have you been doing in your spare time, Mr. Byron? Now we then get a flashback of Aria and Alison catching Byron kissing one of his students now i have to clear up the student i believe was off age um as in byron works in university so it's not like a high school romance but it's still very inappropriate and i think this therefore influences the whole ezra thing a bit later on but the the affair was with this girl down here let me move out of the way meredith this one right here yeah and because we're talking about the parenting of it all i think um the parenting of aria seeing this happen then influences the ezra thing because i think aria um thinks that the ezra relationship is okay because of her dad and because of what she saw her dad doing in the episode titled can you hear me now a actually sends Ella a letter telling her about the affair and that Aria had known about it. Now, A, okay, <laughs> I've got to say this is a bit of a gaggery from A because at the end of the day, I think that letter was a good thing um, because I don't like that man. He should face the consequences of his own actions yes it tore a family apart but whose fault is that do you know what i mean do you know what i'm trying to say and therefore it's kind of assumed that byron took his family away to iceland because aria found out about the affair um and he didn't want you know her saying anything um and that is just like an abuse of parenting there if that's like the correct way to to say it but to 
blackmail your daughter, not blackmail, but kind of, you know, don't tell your mom type of thing. And, you know, that it would destroy the whole family and then moving your entire family away. It plants the idea inside Arya's mind, like we're a family now, we're together, we're away from Rosewood, like this is a fresh start. And Arya's then forced into not saying anything. So Byron's a bit of a menace. Do you know what I mean? Now, Ella is actually, <sighs> Ella's a better human being than me here because she in this episode is like talking about life after the affair and what's going to happen. And she's a really good parent here. And she says she doesn't want to be the one who kind of throws their father out of their kids' lives. And I think that really shows the difference between them two. Because even though this was not her doing, the fact that she still doesn't want to be seen as the villain, um, even though like she had nothing to do with it, um, is I think a really like wise outlook i guess um even though like let's just blame him <laughs> what what would what would the damage be if we just throw him in jail <laughs> and ultimately she tells byron that mike is suspecting something has happened and she doesn't want him or aria to be confused and she doesn't think it's right to keep things from him and i think that's the sign of a really good parent the fact that she wants to be open and honest with her kids about what's going on. The fact that she wants to be open and honest rather than keeping secrets like Byron did, I think really shows the difference in parenting. And um, yeah, I think it's a good way to parent. I like being open and honest and talking about these things. And although I like slated Mike <laughs> in the intro, Mike is still their child and still deserves to know all of the things that are going on in their lives. So I think Ella overall in this situation took a really, really nice approach to kind of the aftermath and how to handle it. Because divorces can be messy, you know? Uh, my parents not together um, and it can be messy. So uh, <laughs> yeah, I think she took a really, really good approach to the situation. Um, to make sure that everyone's informed on it and knows of the situation, knows what's happening and knows what's going on. Byron admits to the affair um, and he says that he begged and begged Arya not to tell anything. And this is where Ella kind of loses the niceness that she's, you know, having for this situation. And I think it highlights her as a good parent because she gets really mad and not at the fact not at the affair, she gets mad at the fact he involved Arya in their mess and that it's, it's an unfair position to put a child and your child especially in. Now, Ella ends up being the one who moves out. Now, I get it because maybe she doesn't want memories of like the family, like dynamic they had. I'm staying sat in that house. This man cheats on you and you're the one that's going jail immediately because at the end of the day she's a better woman than me better human being than me because what do you, what do you mean you're moving out what i'm claiming all the runes in this house i would even change the locks do you know what i mean now in the perfect storm which is where there's a storm in brosewood um there's kind of a little bit of hinting at a romantic relationship between Ashley and Byron for literally like an episode and they never revisit that again. But I just thought I'd say that because how is this man already moving on? And to one of Ella's like best friends too. Trash. Yeah, when I said this guy was a menace, I was not lying flopped on his entire debut album and then never made a song or album ever again do you know what i mean this is when aria and ezra's relationship kind of starts becoming more of a thing and like i said i think this is majorly influenced by byron because you have to think she saw byron and the student together when she was what 15 maybe so to see your dad doing it, I think it's a thing of like, oh, that's okay then. Do you know what I mean? And I think 
because of the daddy issues that she's got I think it's made it made her look more towards older men and I think that's an issue and I think Byron's parenting had an impact on it Byron realistically should be in jail Ezra should have been in jail by the end of the show was he was he so a few episodes later (gasps) I think my hair tie is snapped a few episodes later um remember the whole thing with um Hannah's mom stole a bunch of money from her like place of work I forgot what it's called but we'll move on to her a bit later on um A steals the money that Hannah originally hides no actually hides in the lasagna box and A gives Hannah the task to invite um Ella to this show where Ezra and Arya are going on a date to kind of so Ella can spot it and see that it's going on now A actually kind of slayed her (laughs) i don't know i think a kind of did the right thing like i don't know i don't think it's a bad thing of course it would upset um aria if the whole thing went ahead but it didn't go ahead um because caleb messed with ella's car so ella ends up calling byron for some help and during this time they bond quite a bit and they actually go on a date afterwards ella what are you doing why are you giving your life to that man ella be with me instead so in the episode titled a new normal Paige's dad causes a scene at the school and accuses emily of getting better treatment because of her sexuality now ella sees ezra handle the situation really really well um and she praises him to byron now byron starts to get a bit suspicious that there's something going on between the two and like you are one to talk the call is coming from inside the house and you better pick it up i don't like this man right but this man is one to talk at the end of the day whatever that means aria then has to come in and like reassure byron that like nothing's going on when in fact something is going on but just with the wrong woman then he kind of drops it after like an episode and then like he tries to become like best buds with ezra as well this man needs to get some real friends actually he doesn't deserve them also sorry i forgot to say at this point mike is kind of going through it you know he is in his depression era seasonal depression he's dealing with mental health issues and um depression and ultimately i blame byron for this because he goes into this depression because his family has split up and that was because of byron you know so byron's affair so many consequences and i feel like he still doesn't really take too much responsibility for it um because it's messed aria up and it's also messed mike up i really think he was such an issue for these kids growing up especially they're both at kind of really key ages in their life and i think it's really unfair for both of them um so yeah we don't vibe with byron ella and byron's relationship starts repairing itself i'm not happy about it ella is like reluctant to tell the kids because she doesn't want to like get the kids hopes up in case like nothing happens great parenting i we all vibe with ella ella's my best mate do you know what i mean one night byron sneaks out of the house to go and see ella on like a secret date and aria ends up following him um to see like what's going on because i think she's scared that he's having another affair with meredith down here but then she ends up seeing her parents on a date so that's that i guess good for you in the episode someone to watch over me byron finds out that aria has a relationship with a secret boy the menace to society he is he goes into like her room and like looks around to see if he can like find anything 
excuse me aria does not owe this man anything at the end of the day do you know what i mean obviously i don't endorse the aria ezra relationship but if aria has a relationship she can tell her parents when she is ready and luckily ella stopped byron from going in her room and looking at her stuff like the mother she is quite literally mother you know they end up having an argument um ella and byron and mike overhears this and at the time um mike and aria are like planning a family meal and like they cooked it all and stuff but ella ends up cancelling because of the argument and this is like ella i love you girl but like this is not it (laughs) no i understand the argument and how that can screw with you but i think just for the sake of the kids but then also i guess she didn't want to promise the kids that everything was fine so i don't know i see both sides to that but yeah i'm not gonna deep that part as much i think mike and aria felt quite abandoned by ella in this situation um but ella is also very valid for her feelings towards the situation too so i don't know i i I see i see both sides (sighs) i'm gonna take a drink wow we're only getting on to season two can you believe this love a good pepsi max do you know what i mean season two uh in the episode titled it's alive ella and byron were with the parents when the parents recommended that the girls go to therapy because this was after the whole ian bell tower a death that actually wasn't a death because a killed him later on you know what i'm talking about yeah whatever so the parents were like yeah you should see a therapist and like i agree with that absolutely um i think therapy is a good option for so many people but they also recommended that the girls should not see each other and like that's where i draw the line (laughs) because i think when you're going through a lot of stuff specifically if we're going through a lot of stuff together as a friendship group i think it's nice to have people to to support you that are also going through the same thing do you know what i mean so yeah byron and ella were with the parents when the parents kind of proposed that ella moves back in with byron mike then gets arrested and i think it's interesting here you get to see the two different parenting perspectives okay because ella wanted to go with a soft approach of approaching the situation and mike will come to them when he feels he's ready and he wants to talk about what's going on with him and his feelings and his emotions and that the parents should not push him into talking if he doesn't want to if he's not in the right headspace to do that whereas byron wanted a tougher approach and wanted to send him back to school already and wanted to kind of force him into talking about everything i think this ultimately shows the different parenting approaches and i think it's really interesting to see because i think it just sums up what i'm trying to say (laughs) in terms of i think ella was a good parent and i think byron really screwed up a lot of his actions which therefore influenced his children in bad ways i don't think there was any positives that came from any of his actions really um so i think it's nice to see ella taking a different route learning from maybe past mistakes or learning from how byron handled things and wanted to have ultimately a different approach to the situation and a more softer approach and i think an approach that works well ella later is regretful that she split the girls up and at least she is aware of her actions and um the consequences of her actions and she reflects on herself and you know why did i do that girl i'm also wondering the same you know ella confides in ashley about the girls and they think that the girls could be getting targeted by someone i don't think they know about a at this point but they think someone is out to get them and i think this is good parenting because they're obviously spotting signs within their children they're looking out and they're concerned you know now a bit later on mike 
Okay, maybe I was too harsh on Mike. <laughs> but Mike reveals to um, Ella that he's scared that his mum will abandon him again. Mike! <laughs> All of this because Byron could not keep it in his pants. Can you imagine that? I can imagine that because it happened. In the episode titled The First Secret, we are given a flashback of Arya going into his dad's her dad's office and seeing meredith lying on like the sofa or oh, let me get american the couch um but this is before aria knew about the affair um, and byron downplays it and aria ultimately thinks that her dad is just a cool teacher that the students feel safe around and can therefore hang out in um his office it's so like Arya like was so naive and the way her dad manipulated her into not saying anything about the affair otherwise like the family would be broken is crazy in the episode titled I must confess Ella and Mike get into a fight and it gets so bad that Ella has a sprained wrist at the end of it Ella begs Arya not to say anything now I don't know how I feel about this bit because I like the parents being open and honest so I think if Ella would have told Byron, it would have been good parenting because they're open about what had happened and there's no more secrets type of thing. But I also think Byron would have treated Mike terribly, absolutely terribly if he found out straight away. So I kind of get both sides of the situation because at the end of the day, she also owes Byron nothing, but it is healthy parenting. Um, so I'm not sure how I feel about this. But yeah, in the episode titled Over My Dead Body, Ella starts to suspect that Ezra is having a relationship with um, a student. Why Ella is not calling the police here is an issue. I think if you suspect anything like that and you're working in the school too, I understand maybe talking to the people involved, but I would say something, maybe not to the police, but like to someone in the hierarchy and I guess like it's a huge accusation and if you're wrong like you've just planted that on someone but I think it's to do with safeguarding I work in a school and I think it's to do with safeguarding and keeping kids safe you know so she gets minus points for doing this through many dangers toils and snares that's it Ella confesses to um, Ella and Byron that he's having a relationship with Arya. This man is having a relationship with her. A student. A student. And they get married at the end. Spoiler. Spoiler alert. Byron accuses Ella of knowing about it. Um, but Ella's like, I thought he was having a affair with a, a relationship with a student, but I didn't think it was Arya type of thing. And then Ella then blames his affair. Good on you, girl. Good on you. We were cheering. We were clapping. Let's hear the audience's reaction. Do you know what I mean? Because ultimately, I think it was his affair. Ella, you've, you've hit the nail on the head. And I'm so proud to call you a mother. Arya asked them to go easy on Ezra. Um, but they refuse. And that's really good parenting. Um, however, they don't really get the police involved. Or anyone of any authority or hierarchy within the school um now this is where the whole thing goes downhill and kind of where my issues lie with the the with byron and ella because they basically endorsed this relationship and therefore endorsed the manipulation from ezra to the point where they get married at the end and i think this is such a poor way of parenting because I personally would have just called the police. I don't care if my child was upset when my child is 16 years old um, and is dating a man that's like eight years older and was a teacher. I do not care. I do not care. This man is going to jail. But Ezra didn't really face any serious consequences to do with that. And like, it just annoys me so so much so much in the episode titled a hot piece of a um aria is getting dressed for school and byron comes into her room and is like get changed because the outfit in 
the outfit is inappropriate. Now, I understand this is after they have found out about the affair. So that not a, f- yeah, relationship. No, not affair, sorry. Relationship. But at the end of the day, blaming your child's clothes rather than the predator at the school is ridiculous. Like, ridiculous. This is the craziest thing. And when I was writing this down, I was in disbelief. Byron says to Ezra, he knows what a student and teacher relationship looks like, but his was not with a minor, so it's like less serious. And like, (laughs) just because one of them was before the age of consent and one of them was like the same year they turned 18 for consent does not mean like they're literally having like a predator off what do you mean you're saying that you're like stay away from my daughter because you're her teacher and you're having a relationship but i also had a relationship with students so i get it (laughs) byron i will lock you up myself pack your bags do you know how crazy that sounds no i'm laughing because it's like you have to laugh or you'll cry. What do you mean? They're having a criminal off. Who's the biggest criminal? Are you joking? Byron threatens to take him to the police. Valid. Finally. Finally someone's doing something about it. But however, I put here, and this is a gaggery of the century. I feel that Byron and Ella's threats of the police was more about getting back at Ezra rather than to protect Aria. It's more of a got you. I've got you. I've got you, you know, I don't like you and I've got you, that type of thing, you know, rather than actually like this is to protect Aria at the end of the day. Ella, I've loved you until this moment, right? But she says that they can't go to the police about Ezra because it will ruin Aria's reputation. can't believe this ella i stood up for you absolutely i stopped i called her my mother yeah and she says this she says this ella do you know what this is you've released a great debut album you know insane numbers yeah billboard hot 100 we're talking grammy after grammy for your debut album like a young olivia rodrigo but the debut album i'm not saying this is olivia rodrigo the second album you're a one-hit wonder do you know what i mean flopped yeah we've never heard of you ever again where have you been i love the title of this next episode i'm really sorry the blonde leading the blind (laughs) sorry i'm a bit blonde myself but the gaggery of it the gaggery of it aria starts lying about going on dates with ezra so oh my god i forgot his name holden i think his name is um they holden is the son of like a family friend and they pretend that they're meeting up to go on dates but holden is actually going to um jujitsu i think it is and aria is going on a date with ezra so she starts lying to her parents about that this whole thing is like Aria learned how to lie from her parents, basically, from Byron in particular. Yeah, they haven't really done anything to protect her because Aria, uh, because Ezra is still walking around without being visited by the police, without having any sort of proper punishment. In the episode called Breaking the Code, Aria is having a little breakdown in her room. She's just like me at the end of the day. I'm just a girl, you know? And Ella walks in, she's like, what's going on? going on in the house of commons aria's like byron uh byron's leaving i wish ezra's leaving right and that byron got his wish um so at the end of the episode ella knocks on ezra's apartment she sees aria there and she's like i'm not here to argue i'm here to listen to you guys and hear you guys out ella you are so unvalid yeah you went from princess diana to camilla real quick there was three of us in this marriage yeah in the episode title father knows best aria begs ella to convince ezra no to convince byron that ezra is a nice man (sighs) what 
Ezra got through with Ella about okaying the relationship and like as a parent like how are you endorsing this relationship like I just I just don't get it but anyway there's a father-daughter dance and Arya and Byron normally go every year and have a photo together and have a dance together but Arya this year refuses because of the whole um Ezra situation um I will say I I think Arya does treat her parents a bit unfair not even Arya the writers really to be honest um they treat the parents reaction like they're the villains you know when in reality the reaction that the parents didn't like as for his relationship with Arya is so valid and exactly what the audience want um so the writers really tried to make out that it was all like a villain situation and the parents were terrible for doing this and I remember when I watched the show when I was like 13 14 I viewed the parents as like oh my god I can't believe they're doing this to her like why don't they just want her daughter to be happy and like they're ruining the relationship they are so beyond valid so valid it's crazy in the episode titled eye of the beholder Ella goes to visit Ezra and says just because I want to listen like to hear you out sorry doesn't mean I support the relationship but she will support Arya and whatever Arya wants she will support um Ella don't annoy me I'm blocking you on Twitter arguably I would say she doesn't care about Arya in this situation because to protect Arya you simply have to call the police I'm sorry Arya will realise in a few years' time that she was being manipulated to keep Ezra on the streets, to basically let them get married at the end. In the episode titles, If Dolls Could Talk, Ella and Byron talk about sending Arya to boarding school. And they say it's to protect her from A, but Arya thinks that it's to protect her from Ezra. And it's not a bad idea. (laughs) Arya actually blackmails byron here a bit and she hints at the fact she could expose his relationship with meredith and get him fired from his job the gaggery the gaggery of that the more i think about it not to age shame but i think this is showing Arya's young age not not as a way like she's a child she doesn't know what she's doing but kind of that she is using her father's relationship as blackmail so she could be with her teacher And I think that just shows the brain maturity that's going on inside of her. And that's not to shame her. That's more of the fact she is being manipulated. And you you can tell that, you know? Ella says to Arya that she no longer recognizes her daughter and that she's ashamed of her. And I get Ella here. But Arya has indirectly and directly been affected due to the parenting that has been going on due to byron's affair and she's young and that it influences a young person's brain a lot you know so i think i get ella but like i don't think it's aria's intended fault you know so we're now moving on to season three and byron and ella have split um in this in the gap between season two and season three byron this man starts dating meredith again i say i despise this man i don't have the words pretty much i would like to let byron know that he is a what would you want to say to Gemma? pretty much i will let Gemma know that she is a fat cunt and um the shoes that she gave me were not something that I would particularly buy for myself. They were old maiden type of shoes. And she said that those shoes were meant to be worn on a beautiful woman. So if that's the case, she should have put them back on the rack and she should never even purchase them because she was unqualified to own those shoes if that's the case. And um, I think Gemma is just a disgrace. She's a disgrace to humanity and she's a disgrace to women who are 
actually beautiful and classy and um, she just doesn't have the vernacular that she thinks she possesses. Somebody lied to her several times and told her that she was fly, hot and sexy and beautiful and she's nothing like that. She's nothing of the sort. In the episode title, This is a Dark Night where the liars find out that um, <clears throat> Allison was with Byron the night she went missing at like one point during the night. Because we all know she went on a world tour. Do a leap, a world tour special during a pandemic. Do you know what I mean? And Ella kind of, she doesn't say this exactly, but this is just what it all adds up to. Byron got Ella drunk the night she, Allison went missing so that he could go and see Allison. Has this man said anything positive this whole time? Has he done anything positive this whole time another underage girl what on earth is going on in the house of commons they find out allison was blaming no allison was blackmailing byron sorry um because of the whole affair thing as she should bleed him dry take him for everything I'll be their front row. I'll be their barrier. But nothing really goes on again in season three with, with them. So we're moving on to season four. So in Cat's Cradle, Zach, who I've not put him on here actually because he's a bit irrelevant, but he's here for like an episode or mm, more than an episode, but Zach is Ella's new love interest and he asked Ella to go to Vienna for a year. Ella is very drawn. She wants to, but she doesn't want to leave her children behind. But Arya kind of persuades her she's like go like this will be so good for you you know you've been a parent for us you deserve a break as she should but ella's i'm still annoyed at season two ella do you know what i mean in the episode titled gamma zeta die aria asked byron to convince ella to go because she thinks that she will listen to him and we see the family all together in the living room kind of supporting each other in that in the episode titled Un unbridled Ella returns back to Rosewood after the whole Vienna thing and surprises Arya, but Arya tells her that her and Ezra have broken up. I think this is after the whole book situation, um, but she doesn't say why. Ella reveals that Zach actually proposed. Arya asks, like, girl, did you say yes or no? Hello? But Ella's like, I'm not going to say right now because you're more important. Girl, tell us the answer. I'm getting sick and tired of you, Ella. Tell us. You know, I want to be at the wedding, you know? Thank God you moved on from Byron. It's a shame that Zach turns out to be a bit of a creep. But we're back, guys. I took a little break. The lighting might have changed because it's dark outside now. Because I've been talking for that long. Um, so apologies. But let's continue. This Zach guy ends up being a creep and like hits on Hannah. Um, so Hannah tells Arya, and basically they got engaged and then Ella calls the wedding off. We are now moving on to season five. In the episode title screen for me, Ella asks Arya to be her maid of honor and she books like a bridal session to try on dresses. Um, Arya promises that she'll go, but Arya ends up missing it and apologizes for it. Ella is quite upset and paranoid and she asks Arya if she's doing this because she doesn't agree with the wedding. But Arya's like, no, like this is like, like totally not the situation that's going on. In the episode titled Matches of Crime, Ella is interviewed about Ezra, but she doesn't say anything about the relationship, which therefore to me shows that she supports it because I would just say something, you know, just tell someone about this relationship. But yeah, this Zach guy ends up being a creep and hits on Hannah, so, Ella calls off the the wedding in the end and Arya has to do a lot of reassuring that Ella was not the issue with what had happened um, because Ella blames herself for um, a lot of what happened but Zach was just another creep. Another one, thank you. <sighs> Later on, Ella asks Arya if her and Ezra are talking again and Arya says yes and Arya confides in her and says she doesn't know if she can trust Ezra and Ella says and let me get this right she says people can change you've changed I've changed your father has changed so now she wants the relationship I understand this is later on in the show so Arya's a bit older 
But this is still a relationship that took place when Arya was literally a child. And the amount of manipulation that Arya went through with this whole Ezra relationship is wild. And the fact <laughs> Ella is here supporting it. Girl, what happened to the Ella that I know and love? In the episode titled No One Loves or Understands Me, Mike and Mona start dating. And Arya obviously has an issue with this because Mona was A, so she confides in Byron. And but Byron kind of shrugs her off and is like, Mike's happy, Mona's happy, just leave it. And I have a huge issue with this because I love Mona to pieces absolutely adore her but at the end of the day Mona was a and tormented um Arya a lot and I get why Arya was upset so for Byron to shrug off um her concerns is very unvalid of him and I think kind of set a thing in Arya's mind do my parent like do my parents care about me <laughs> Um, and I think it must have been weird for Arya to experience that because she went through so much with Mona being A and Byron at the time um, was so angry about the whole A situation. But then he technically shrugging Arya off in that manner. Your parenting has already failed to protect Arya from the manipulation that she's facing with Ezra and now you're kind of forcing her to be okay with her, her tormentor dating her brother you know and I love Mona I love her to bits but this was not so season six obviously the dollhouse had happened so um Byron kind of opens up to Arya and is like look I'm always here if you want to talk to me about anything and I think I hate this man but it's good to know that you have a parent there kind of on your shoulder ready to talk whenever you are ready byron spends time with aria to make her feel safe and that she has people around her so finally took six seasons for this man to do some positive parenting aria ends up finally opening up and shows her a picture of and shows him a picture of her bedroom and tells her like tells him this is what the dollhouse was like and that she kind of wants to change it in the episode title songs of innocence ella says that aria should talk to the police but she can talk to the police when she is ready and when she wants to and aria actually ends up lying to the police and says she sees she, uh the charles was andrew and ella gets really really mad at this and that's so valid and i think they were correct here for calling aria out when needed you know and saying I'm your parent and I need to tell you what you did there was the wrong thing to do. So yeah, the parenting in season six is actually like, okay. Ultimately, I think a lot of their parenting led to their children having problems of their own, especially Byron. Byron is a complete menace to society. And I think his relationship with Meredith influenced a lot of the Ezra relationship and the failure to protect as uh, Arya from Ezra really for me was the issue and I would like to say I think the writers wrote them very bad and I think the reaction to the Ezra thing was very valid but they wrote it as if they were villains for for reacting that way when in reality that's a valid way to react um so yeah, that's kind of on them. I think Byron trying to take the high on over Ezra. I despise Ezra. But Byron trying to be like, yeah, I had a student teacher relationship, but at least mine wasn't a minor. That is not the comeback that you think it is. I'm just like, what on earth, you know? And as well as Arya, Byron was a key issue as to why Bi um, Mike had depression so he's not only screwed up one child it's two children that he screwed up and honestly byron did not do anything positive until season six parenting wise i i think ella is okay i really liked ella at the start but the continuation of accepting that as a relationship was my main thing with her 
But I think overall her parenting was good. Um, I think she was a good parent. I think obviously she made mistakes and that's that's fine. Um, because she always reflected and she always looked at herself rather than other people, which Byron didn't do. Um, so yeah, I give Byron a big fat zero on the parenting scale. But for Ella, I will give her like, I'll give her like a six, maybe. Now we have the Merrins. I feel like I'm saying that wrong. Ashley Merrin. Marin. Maybe it's my accent. This one gets a bit bigger. So let me introduce you to the people we have on here. So obviously we have Ashley and this over here. This is Tom. This is Hannah over there. And obviously these two are the parents of Hannah. This is Caleb. We all know Caleb. This is Isabel. This is Kate. And this is Ted. Okay. Ashley uh, and Tom were born in Rosewood. And they got married and uh, had Hannah. When Hannah was a little girl. Not completely little but younger. Um, Tom left Ashley for another woman. And this already. Already he's getting minus points um, in the parenting factor ashley was embarrassed by uh this because she thought it was her fault um so she originally told hannah a different story to what had actually happened ultimately tom left the family and ashley was a single mom yeah excuse me ashley is probably my favorite parent on the show she makes mistakes but the mistakes are always because she wants to protect her daughter and i think that's a really nice way to make mistakes and she always learns from them and she always tries to use them as a way to teach that to her daughter um so yeah season one in the pilot uh we first meet ashley um when she tells hannah that she bumped into ella montgomery because they came back from iceland and um she doesn't know about the divorce and hannah is like you should just tell people like it's gonna come out you should just tell people that you and tom had got divorced bless hannah here like this is so sad that tom has said this but hannah said that tom didn't just leave ashley but he also left hannah too so it can't just be ashley's problem you know wilden boo tomato tomato i've not put him up here because i don't think he deserves it not in my house he shows up at their house because hannah gets arrested for shoplifting and basically the way that hannah gets out of this is ashley sleeps with wilden um to try and get her off the charges now there's a lot of views about this online and i understand why it could be a really bad role model to hannah because this is not how you solve your problems but at the same time she only did that to protect hannah um so she kind of sacrificed herself to protect her daughter because one thing about ashley like she will die to protect hannah and i think that's why she's my favorite because her parenting is so different from the other parents on the show and she really cares about her daughter ashley and wilden end up having a thing for a few episodes this guy is a freak like i know you're a police officer but get a job get some friends get a life you know in the episode titled to kill a mocking bird uh, Wilden is looking through Hannah's bag to try and get some evidence for the Alison De Laurentiis case. Ashley sees him doing it and like basically kicks him out of the house. In the episode titled Can You Hear Me Now, um, Hannah crashes Sean's car, which therefore Tom has to come back to Rosewood to kind of sort that problem out. Tom ends up taking Hannah to dinner and this crusty flop, flop with a capital P at the end of a man uh drops the bombshell that he's getting married to another woman and not only is that the bombshell they walk in right imagine that i would my head would be on mars i'd be fuming mega mega fuming hannah obviously is so hurt by this because she feels like she's being replaced with a new family and like that's so like why would you 
put your daughter through that literally as you come back to rosewood and this is like kind of exaggerated more when isabel is talking about kate being like this top top person and she's like the kindest person ever and achieving all these things and hannah's dad is talking about like oh you crashed his car and like he couldn't even like prop her or give her any compliments or anything like when i say this man is worse than byron montgomery we have an issue this ultimately is the start of hannah and kate's kind of rocky relationship it's just full of so much tension tom actually doesn't pay child support so ashley is like the only one earning money in the house for her and hannah considering the size of the house i promise you the rent on that the rent on that tom is actually such a freak treating his daughter and his ex-wife like that not paying any child support is crazy ashley is a much better woman than me that man would not be alive right now if that was me and that's all i'm saying there's even one scene where um mona asks hannah to come on a shopping spree but hannah's like no i can't like she doesn't have money um but then ashley gives her 200 dollars, which is like the only uh 100 sorry which is the only money in her purse talk about like giving sacrifices for other people like i was raised um i have both my parents in my life but um i mostly live with my mom who's a single mom my dad did pay child support though and uh, supported us a lot um but i've seen sacrifices that single moms have to make and it's like it's wild so i can't even imagine what ashley is like going through here hannah tries to get a job but she actually finds out through this that her mum is like in serious serious debt ashley works at a bank deposit and she ends up stealing money from esther potter who is a woman that has come in to deposit money into her bank um and ashley hopes to return the money by the time that uh, esther comes back um which is normally like a month later um and she stores it inside a lasagna box which is so iconic <laughs> on her way home she finds out that hannah has been involved in a hit and run so she goes to the hospital immediately and she buys hannah like her own private room even though they don't have the money for that and uh, i just love ashley like she loves her daughter and she would do anything to make her feel special to make her feel loved and to protect her and the amount of sacrifices she has to make um is crazy hannah returns home from the hospital and the money eventually gets found by a and a blackmails hannah to do things to um get the money back in the episode titled if at first you don't succeed lie lie again ashley is informed that esther potter wants to come and see her bank deposit now this is a shock to her because she didn't know that she would want to do it so soon. so ashley so hannah walks in on ashley crying at the kitchen table um and she's like what's going on but ashley tries to keep you know not not to worry hannah you know ashley says during this episode that the doctors wanted to shave like a bit of her hair at the hospital but she stopped them from doing it because she thought the mental ish uh the mental struggles that would come with that would really hurt hannah i love her to bits initially this is this is where caleb gets introduced initially ashley doesn't like caleb and she thinks hannah should stay away from caleb esther potter actually ends up passing away so in an episode titled the new normal someone who claims to be her nephew comes in wanting to look at the bank deposit and during this he asks ashley on a date so he goes to the house and he comes to pick up ashley for the date however caleb suspects him and he's like hmm okay caleb does some research and he actually finds out this man is not who he says he is and it's completely someone else so caleb tells hannah hannah tells ashley but ashley's like are you sure but caleb ends up being right so i think ashley is quite thankful of caleb in that situation so she kind of changes her mind here and there about him in a person of interest caleb uh starts living in the Marin's basement 
uh without ashley knowing um but ashley kind of things start running out around the house like groceries and uh the toilet seat was being kept up so ashley got really suspicious so she ends up actually finding out about this and she gets really really mad and ashley sends caleb away and she's really angry at hannah for lying to her hannah reacts to this and she doesn't go home for a day she like runs away for a day now this is where ashley shows how much of a good mom she is because she reflected on her actions and she thought i don't want to worry about hannah and if she's in danger and i'm gonna keep my opinions and my thoughts to myself and whatever makes hannah happy is priority and i think that really shows to me how good ashley is at parenting because she makes a lot of sacrifices and she's also one to look back at her actions and if she's overreacted or she's done something wrong she will apologize and she will take it back Ashley invites them both to dinner and at the end of it she sees how much Caleb cares for Hannah so she she lets him stay and within this she lets Hannah explain you know her point of view and what was going on and I think that's really good parenting um because she really listened to Hannah and what she had to say and rather than kind of shut her out and not hear her point of view i think that's really good parenting however hannah finds out that caleb was paid to spy on her by jenna so he doesn't really stay for long ashley's very concerned about uh hannah's feelings at this time and she listens to caleb and caleb's point of view and caleb comes around because he wants to deliver a letter to hannah um he asks ashley to give it to her but Ashley says it would be better coming from him. I um, mean, she listens to him and she trusts him. And I think this was so good, even for Caleb. Caleb had a very difficult upbringing and a very different, uh, difficult childhood. And he didn't really have the people around him to support him. So the fact he had Ashley to support him, I think was really crucial to Caleb. And I think he really needed that. For Ashley to be able to listen to him rather than be really cold and aggressive towards him or upset or angry whatever she listened to him and she gave him advice she is very good at not jumping to conclusions and just listening to people and hearing people out she offers emotional support not only to hannah but like to people around her as well and i think that just shows the kind of person that she is season two comes around and she forces hannah to go to therapy um, I actually think this is a good thing. <laughs> I think, I don't know, I just, I really like therapy and I think it's good for people. So, you know, you, I think people have different perspectives on that and whether forcing her to go is a good thing or not. But I think for Hannah's situation, I think it was a good thing. Guess who's back in Rosewood? The flop. Tom the flop, I like to call him. Audacity of this man to come back. Again. The amount of times he leaves and comes back audacity of this man and dr sullivan's office gets trashed by a and ashley panics because she doesn't want her daughter to be a suspect for the trashing of the office if that makes any sense after ian's body is found ashley really takes this hard because she said that since allison went missing she fears for her daughter's life every day and she doesn't know um if you know when hannah leaves the house that day if is that the last time she might see her um once again just showing the kind of parent that she is i just love her to bits in the episode titled the devil you know ashley says that she pays for her dad's funeral even though she didn't have a relationship with her dad i love this woman when i say that is mother she raised millions if ashley Marin has zero fans I'm dead. Call the police. Hannah slays here because Tom says he's staying in Rosewood for a while. But Hannah kind of, she says that he's very hypocritical because he only comes into her life when she's done something wrong rather than when she's done something right. Absolutely. You tell that man. You tell that flop right now. So in the episode title, Never Letting Go, Ella visits Ashley and they raise concerns about um, how they 
supported the girls not seeing each other anymore because of Peter Hastings. And they actually accused Peter Hastings of pushing therapy on the girls to institutionally fix the issue rather than being a parent and, and helping the children all together. Ashley tells Hannah to give Tom a second chance. Boo. Not for me. Tom says he's having issues with Isabel. Wow, I care so much. Oh no, a tear slid down my face. Like, literally a few episodes later, he's saying that he's leaving Rosewood again. Make your mind up. And then Hannah gets very angry at him as she should and he's like okay maybe i won't go mm -mm. hannah's like you're not here for me you're here to get back with ashley so true tell them go on hannah speak your mind i'll give you the mic and then tom finally admits the truth and that he is actually there for ashley and that he, he wants to get back together with her not my queen ashley going for that man not in my lifetime ashley is princess diana and tom is charles and you know whose side i'm on at this point as well um emily's parents have moved out of rosewood for a year because of um uh wayne's deployment so emily ends up living with um ashley and Hannah. Ashley is much more accepting of Emily's sexuality at this time. And I think it's something that Emily really needed. Her parents were not as supportive in regards to her sexuality. So to have someone who was supportive and would uh, be there for support. And if she ever needs someone to talk to, I think was really key for Emily during this time. In the episode title, Save Your Date, Tom asks Hannah to be a bridesmaid. Initially, she says no, but then she ends up uh, saying yes a bit later on. And this is the episode where Kate gets um, Hannah purposefully drunk and Hannah ends up vomiting on Isabel's wedding dress and Tom accuses her of purposefully sabotaging the night. And even if it was on purpose, I support it. It wasn't on purpose anyway because kate had tricked hannah but i support it <laughs> i think the difference here is really showing because ashley likes to hear people out and if uh hannah ever did anything wrong she would listen to hannah what really had happened um to hear her side but the fact that tom would literally not and just kicked her out is crazy and i think that really shows the difference in parenting and just how hannah is treated honestly also at this point um ashley and tom have a one night stand and he's literally getting married the next day so when i say this man this man ashley ashley don't even do it in the episode titled over my dead body uh which is the the wedding of tom and isabel um hannah actually interrupts the ceremony to tell isabel about the one night stand that him, that Tom and Ashley had had. Father Knows Best is the last time we see Tom in season two. Um, and this is uh, the father daughter dance. And Tom says that he can't take Hannah because he has other plans. What a freak, honestly. Ashley offers to take Hannah um, because she doesn't want Hannah missing out. So uh, they go together, which is so cute i just love i love this daughter mother duo so much so tom says that isabel and kate are moving to rosewood and ashley reassures hannah that tom said if there is any issues between kate uh and hannah that there would be consequences to prevent hannah and kate from both causing issues and ashley makes hannah promise to make kate feel welcome in rosewood um fuck them kids <laughs> but however the next day everyone in hannah's contact list receives a naked photo of kate in the episode titled the naked truth um isabel kate ashley and hannah are outside the principal's office because obviously they're sorting the situation out and uh, ashley defends hannah a lot i think ashley is aware hannah is someone who might not speak up for herself a lot of the time and i love that ashley 
kind of acknowledges that and then therefore will be that voice for her and the principal insists they both uh go to rosewood truth day which is where students can get out any secrets that they're holding that might be kind of you know eating them apart by by keeping them a secret later on uh hannah says to ashley like you don't have to come if you don't want to because the principal says that ashley and isabel should also go but ashley's like no i have some truths that i want to hear as well um so whilst they are at this truth event um the parents kind of get together and talk more about their girls and say they think that someone could be targeting their girls again um and within this they also find out the naked photo was edited and sent by kate herself to try and get back at hannah in breaking the code wilden appears at ashley's back door when i say get a job this man is so jobless and i think he might need to seek some friends as well whilst he's at it but to ask questions about the allison investigation and ashley is like this is harassment go girl you tell him i'll give you the mic ashley then finds a police report at first she thinks it's wilden that has uh delivered the police she goes to confront wilden and wilden's like how did you get this and he's just as shocked so ashley's like oh well so wilden asks her like look can you like find out for me where this police report has come from hannah sees ashley and wilden together and she assumes that they're together so she confronts ashley but ashley tells her about the police report and there's a bit of an argument and uh ashley demands that hannah gives uh her phone over um to check in and to make sure that she's not being um you know taunted again by a which spoiler she is in eye of the beholder uh hannah kind of begs ashley for a new phone but Ashley kind of gaslights Hannah and she's like, you can get one when you tell me the truth. (laughs) You have to rate it, you know? Ashley and Hannah have always been so open. So I think for Ashley to see Hannah keeping secrets from her is like tearing her apart. So I understand the frustration and Ashley wanting to just be told the truth. Um... But yeah, a little tension starts to be formed within that. But once again, I don't think Ashley is doing anything maliciously. Um, Just like I don't think Hannah is either. I just think they're trying to protect each other. Then we move on to season three. In the episode titled That Girl Is Poison, um, Hannah skips school and Ashley makes her go to the church to do some volunteering work. And there, Ashley meets ted this man down here and ted actually finds like the usb where the nat videos are stored um i think i think he might have watched maybe one of them or saw what they were and decided instead of handing it over to the police i'm going to give it to ashley um because it was to do with hannah and the girls ashley ends up destroying it because there's also a video of her and wilden kissing on it I do think this she should not have done. And I think the NAT club videos should have been given to the police. But I think during this time, a lot of the NAT people were already dead. Um, But I still think Ashley should have given that to the police. In the episode titled The Remains of A, um, Ted actually asks Ashley on a date. However, she gets quite paranoid because he's a pastor um, of a church and um ashley asked if he can do sunday for a date and ted is like no because i'm a pastor pastor i don't know ashley's also paranoid because he is to do you know he works with the church ashley's cv i guess is not clean and she's made mistakes um but Hannah kind of reassures her that like people can change and people make mistakes and it's really, really fine. I just love Hannah and Ashley and the bonding they go through and, you know, propping each other and giving each other confidence. I think it's really so nice to see. I love and it's it's so refreshing compared to the other parents on the show because the other parents are so inconsistent with their parenting but i feel like ashley is always on it in the episode called the khan game um the police find blood on allison's friendship bracelet so the police 
uh, suspecting Hannah and asks Hannah for a blood sample. So Ashley goes on a date with Ted, but the entire time she's basically talking with Veronica about the whole Hannah giving blood and, you know, Hannah being a suspect for Alison's murder. In the episode, What Comes of the Broken Hearted, Ashley helps Caleb get a job at the church. I love her. Guys, that's mother. That's my mother. She's more mother than Lily from Gossip Girl. And that's that's an achievement everyone in the episode titled hot water um hannah kind of tells ashley that they they are aware um wilden and allison had a a relationship when she was alive another predator on the show everyone how many do we have they love a good predator on the show do you know what i mean wilden kind of hears this and he then threatens ashley to keep Hannah quiet and there's a whole standoff thing right Wilden gets quite aggressive with Ashley and starts kind of pulling her arm and like really hurting her and telling her to keep Hannah quiet or like he'll have to keep her quiet so Ashley ends up running him over can't even say Ashley what a terrible thing you've done go for it do it again let's watch it in seven different angles let's watch it in slow-mo I'll be there let's do it again wilden doesn't end up waking up um so she just drives away so as she tells hannah that she thinks she's killed wilden so they go back to where it happened and like wilden is not there but the guilt um hits ashley kind of straight away she feels guilty very very quickly but i also think that kind of shows the person that she is um she instantly felt guilt and there wasn't any denial in her actions and she was very open about look i did this like this was me so then we go on to season four there is tension between ashley and hannah because ashley said that she went on a work trip with her friends and they went to a show on broadway however hannah reads a message on ashley's phone saying from one of her friends being like i hope you're feeling better the show wasn't that good anyway she didn't really miss out so hannah's like why are you lying because like we are so open with each other um ashley tells her that she doesn't appreciate being spied on um and that she won't tell hannah what happened when she was away or why she didn't go to the show uh, she later apologizes for it once again. I love a uh, apologetic queen. Caleb then goes to Tom. And Tom says that Ashley came asking for money. And he said he didn't really have a lot of money right now. But he went to go and talk to Isabel. And he keeps a gun locked in a drawer. And when he came back, the gun had disappeared and has been missing since ashley went to go speak to him in gamma zeta die hannah finds the gun in ashley's closet and tries to hide it because at this point wilden is dead we all cheered let me hear a cheer everyone we all cheered ashley was not the one that killed him so ashley then gets arrested in an episode called under the gun and tom then takes primary care of hannah boo ashley is refused bail she keeps denying that she killed wilden hannah later receives a call from ashley being like don't worry everything will be fine and i'm just like when you're put in that position and you've been arrested for a murder that wasn't you but you think it was you and you're still the one to be apologizing to people and supporting people and telling other people that things are going to be okay like what a character she is hannah tries to take blame for the murder um but mona actually ends up taking the blame hannah and mona try and fabricate a lie but but mona was like hannah you're like you can't (laughs) so um without hannah knowing mona actually takes responsibility and ashley gets let out the episode titled what's in the box ashley actually loses her job um because of everything that happened but jessica de laurentis hires her for her estate business real estate business i don't know i don't know what business people do it's none of my business caleb and hannah break up and there's this new guy called travis and ashley walks in on him on him and hannah kissing and ashley is like whoa 
whoa, 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 whoa. Mm-mm. Ashley takes Hannah to this place called Cracked Up, which is like a like an anger room. I forgot what they call it, like where you smash things. So to get her anger out after her and Caleb had broken up and to let all of her emotions out because Ashley was worried that like she was bottling everything up. Um, so they both, you know, have a little bit of therapy together. Do you know what I mean? Season five. Alison has just obviously been revealed to be alive and Hannah has been interviewed by the police. So Ashley picks her up um, and asks her if she knows, if she knew about Alison being alive. And Hannah kind of snaps back and is like, I don't want to talk about it. Um, so Ashley kind of leaves it um, because obviously Hannah is not comfortable. So Hannah then comes home drunk one night and Ashley helps put her to bed. Um, and she says why did you get like this and Hannah says that it's because Caleb is back and Ashley kind of like immediately understands that so in the episode title screen for me Ashley offers Alison a place to stay for the night because her dad has um is not home and um she doesn't want Alison to be alone so she offers to make her dinner and to run her a really nice bath I put this in just because like it just continues to show the person that she is like she is so kind and loving i love her to bits ashley even says that allison's story which we know is fake but the story she tells is actually really upsetting but thank god but ashley then says she used to think allison was too tough for her to for her own good but thank god because she doesn't know you know if it was someone else they wouldn't have survived that but because it was allison she was strong enough to survive that however allison like sets up a fake robbery uh, for someone to break into the Marin's house to like scare them and to make sure Alison's kidnapping story was like legit. Um, in the episode titled March of Crimes, Hannah and Ashley actually have an argument. And whilst they have an argument, uh, a flask of alcohol falls out of Hannah's bag. And Ashley says that this is totally unacceptable and not the way to deal with kind of trauma and this is such a good way of parenting because she's laying down the law whilst also kind of teaching her about life and about how to deal with things because she's right alcohol is not a way to deal with things and hannah really had to learn that you know because ashley says that she knows hannah is looking for an escape but this is not the answer so she understands what her daughter is going through and she's trying to teach her daughter a life lesson of like look this is not how you deal with it like this is just gonna hurt you more and more rather than take care of you and you know to help you process things properly there's this period in the show where jason and ashley share a kiss um, they both work for Jessica's real estate business and one night when they're having dinner um, they end up kissing and Hannah's quite paranoid that Ashley will lose her job over it but she says it's nothing also during this time Ted proposes to Ashley um, so Hannah was like are you going to tell him about what happened with Jason and she she says he doesn't deserve the pain but she doesn't answer his proposal straight away and she says she just needs time to think but i think ashley ashley's a very honest and open person like we've been showing throughout the show so i do think it was a bit weird for her to be like i'm not going to tell him but i also understand that it was just a kiss and like nothing more um and that she really wanted to dedicate her life to to ted and um didn't want any more pain um so i get that side of it but i think it would have been nice for her to be honest um, and open about it ashley then ends up quitting her job at the real estate business in the episode titled out damn spot hannah goes to visit tom about colleges she lists the colleges that she gets into however tom refuses to pay for her college well not refuses but he said that in the in the divorce there was an agreement he'd pay like ten thousand pounds or something every year but the colleges that she wants to go to are much more expensive than that however he said that he is paying for kate's tuition so hannah was like whoa 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 you're paying for kate's full tuition but not mine so she's kind of like okay i see who the favorite daughter is and i see you don't want to upset the wrong daughter and tom is like i just can't believe like 
he is such a waste of space. It's crazy. Like, I thought Byron was bad. This guy is probably even worse. Like, the way he just has, like, no involvement in Hannah's life and he openly kind of chooses Kate over Hannah is so ridiculous and like he does a lot of this to her face as well so it's really questionable so it gets to a point where hannah has to enter a pageant to try and win tuition money because not only has tom never paid child support but he won't pay tuition too so hannah literally has to make sacrifices and join a pageant to win money so that she could go to college there's a really nice moment with emmy emily and ashley where emily opens up to ashley and asks her like if you're in a relationship and you really like the person but you don't think they're your long-term future kind of what would you do and emily's and ashley says that relationships aren't perfect but you know if you love each other but you don't think the future is there then you need to be honest you know and i i just love that little moment and i just love ashley always being there for the girls in the title to plea or not to plea okay shakespeare okay marlene king shakespeare has like been really quiet since that episode dropped i won't lie marlene king ashley says to hannah that uh so allison gets arrested for mona's murder and she says that allison has entered the plea get plea deal um to name her accomplice and they think the accomplice is hannah so hannah tells her the truth about the whole situation and ashley is like do you know who's like trying to set you up and hannah says they thought it was allison but now they don't know um who it is so hannah ends up getting arrested and they sit across each other in like one of those like rooms where it's like just like the prisoner and like the family member visiting i don't know what it's called and hannah is so apologetic and so like i'm so sorry that like this has happened and like getting you involved and stuff and she actually says something really nice and she's like uh let me get this right so ashley says she hopes hannah didn't get the bad decision gene from her but hannah replies that she hopes she did she says that she hopes she has her dna because that means she's smart brave um but ashley says she'll get her daughter the best legal help possible to get her out of there once again making more sacrifices for uh because she she can't afford it then we go on to season six and uh obviously uh hannah has been in the dollhouse ashley gets so worried that she actually ends up sick and like having to go to hospital because she's so worried about her daughter oh my hair tie snapped guys i'll be back in the episode titled oh brother where are thou um ashley gives hannah a thirty thousand dollar check for her tuition money and uh, ashley says it came from the karasimi group um which jessica had told her about and that she donated to a lot she also mentions when she was in the dollhouse she would apply for every scholarship possible for her daughter because she knew that hannah really wanted to go to college <sighs> but season 6b i think ashley actually runs the radley hotel but we first see her as she expresses her concerns about cc being let out of like the mental institution that she's in because obviously allison wants her out but ashley's like mm, i don't know about that in the episode title burn this caleb is trying to find somewhere to stay he's i think he's split up with spencer maybe at this point um but he says he's checked every hotel and uh, everywhere he'll even sleep in the closet so Ashley comes over because she hears this and she's like, why don't you come and stay in our spare room at home because you know it. Um, but Caleb uh, actually says no because he thinks it would be weird because <laughs> um, obviously him and Hannah aren't together anymore. Um, but, you know, the option was always there for him. So there starts to be some tension between Ashley and Hannah after this because Ash uh, because Hannah is engaged to George. Uh, Hannah is uh, engaged to someone new and hannah has a argument with ashley because she believes ashley never really tried to get to know this partner who was called jordan because she was so invested in her and caleb that she never really gave um 
Jordan a chance. However, Ashley's like, I've invited you guys to dinner so many times and each time you guys have said no. So Ashley kind of fights back and is like, no, I do care and I've offered, but you've just like said no. She says that she thinks Jordan is great, but she just doesn't know him like she knows Caleb. So overall, I think Ashley is my favorite parent on the show. She does a really good job at laying down the law, but in a really positive way rather than punishing her child she reinforces life learning and she always does things to help hannah learn about life and how to progress in life and how to deal with things that she would you know have to go through but not only did she offer support to hannah but she also offered support to a lot of hannah's friends um she really took in emily and Caleb in particular, but she was always there for other people all the time, every every single time. Um, obviously, Ashley made mistakes. I'm not saying she's the perfect mum, but she would always own up to these mistakes and she would always make herself aware that she has done this, she can't do this again, and she learns from them. Same way that Hannah also does that too. I think Ashley is a really positive role model in Hannah's life and someone who she really, really needs um and overall like i said she lays down the law but not in a way to shame her daughter in a way to express the need to learn about life you know um tom the the least i say about him the better tom is the worst dad arguably on the show he just doesn't care about hannah he doesn't want to be in her life And he obviously prioritizes Kate and Isabel. And the amount of times that he shames her to her face is so disgusting to see. And he just is so unsupportive of Hannah and of Ashley. It's just, it's really gross to see. And I'm just happy that Hannah learned more from her mum. And like she said, got more of her mum's kind of dna and learn about life through her mum rather than through the eyes of her dad um because i think if she learned life through her dad's eyes she would be a totally different person final family we're going to be talking about in today's video because you have to come back for part two of the next one um is the fields family pam here this oh i can't get out the way is wayne Emily, obviously, I've included Alison in here for a reason, which we will see. Maya, the very end, and twins. Season one, pilot episode, we automatically get kind of a first glance at Pam's character. So Emily and Pam are talking about Arya's return to Rosewood, and straight away, Pam is really judgmental about Arya and comments on the red streak that Arya had in her hair um before you know before Alison went missing and how inappropriate it was and she makes a comment about like the fact like her mum used to let her walk around like that type of thing in the uh the Jenna thing episode Maya is struggling a lot with living in Alison's house um because it's a dead girl's house so Emily invites Maya to stay over And at first, Pam really, really takes to Maya. Emily is uh, obviously battling with her sexuality at this time. And she kind of drops a hint to Pam saying that she doesn't think that she thinks something is wrong with her, um, alluding to her sexuality. However, Pam thinks it's not having closure from Alison disappearing. In the episode, Keep Your Friends Close, um, Pam is sent a photo of Emily and Maya kissing. And this is ultimately is the issue with her character in the show because of her reaction to it so maya and emily are in emily's room and wayne uh who works in the army down here there he is uh he works in the army and he's come back to rosewood uh temporarily um so when wayne comes back pam uses that as an excuse to kind of kick maya out so that it can be a family thing in the episode titled moments later Emily comes out to her parents. Now, Wayne was very... He didn't necessarily support it, but he supported it because he 
he said he's lost a lot of people in his job because he works in the army and the only thing that matters is that emily is alive and healthy and whatever she does with her life he will support it however pam like invented homophobia um and she was like homophobic straight off she hated it she hated the whole relationship she really hated maya um because of the relationship and she really kind of shamed emily for being gay in the episode title salt meets wound emily like asked pam like please can like let's have maya around for dinner let's talk about it try and settle it and the dinner is like going fine and wayne really takes to maya and he actually really likes maya however pam just like loses control and she does not like it unfortunately wayne has to leave rosewood to go back to deployment so she, emily kind of loses the only family support that she has so in the time in the episode know your frenemies wayne doesn't appear in this episode but pam says to emily that um wayne is kind of really ashamed of her and the whole relationship however this i think is false and used by pam as like a got you type of moment thing because wayne is very supportive of the relationship and there's not a point in the show where he doesn't support emily's choices and emily's partners and emily's life and sexuality so i think this is false in the episode titled the new normal Paige's dad makes a whole speech about how emily gets things because of her sexuality but pam stands up for emily and is like emily has always got stuff that she's deserved and she's earned pam later says that although she might not agree with her sexuality thing she's always her daughter and she will always come first so in season two pam wants to move to texas because wayne has been deployed there and she's really struggling living without wayne um so she wants to move to texas however emily doesn't want to move to texas and leave her life so she says that she'll get a scholarship so she needs to stay in rosewood but there is no scholarship so emily even considers writing a fake letter to her mum, and she types it up a letter a sponsorship letter to prove that she needs to stay in rosewood but she ends up ripping it apart however a sends this letter to pam anyway in the episode titled never letting go pam goes to texas with wayne and emily moves in with hannah and ashley in the episode titled save your save the date um wayne comes back for uh literally like an episode um and he surprises emily at a swim meet he says that he wants to thank the danby scout that's it um however emily gets an injury um for swimming and everything kind of gets set behind so emily goes to hospital and wayne is up there to comfort her and he says she needs to take it easy and that everything is going to be okay wayne is really supportive here and tells her that uh she doesn't need to worry about getting back to swimming as quick as possible and that no matter what they'll be able to find a way for her to pay for college um and that she'll get into the college she wants no matter what swimming record she has and emily says that she's average if she doesn't have swimming but wayne reassures her that there is absolutely nothing average about emily whatsoever in the title father knows best which is the father-daughter dance wayne and emily are obviously planning to go together but he is told that maya has gone missing so he helps search for maya and then later on in the dance emily turns up late and she's so apologetic and she's like i'm so 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 sorry because she was looking for maya but wayne is like look it's so fine in the episode unmasked which is the mona reveal episode pam returns to rosewood and this is the scene where maya's body is found and she tells emily at the end of the episode in season three wayne is obviously very paranoid and wants to protect emily so he sets an alarm um up around the house and he also puts a tracker on her phone i believe um so there's one point where emily tries to swap phones so he doesn't know where she is and he gets quite not mad but quite upset because he tells her that um she's not letting him in she's not 
opening up to him and that's the main thing that's making him worried in the episode title that happened uh that one night pam says that she's so proud of her and maya would be too so this is really kind of pam's turning point in the show pam then gets a job at the rosewood police station actually um so that's something (laughs) in the cat's cradle episode um pam finds out that emily has taken pam's uh medication for her injury and she confronts her outside of school and she's really arguing with her grab her arm etc and they actually get reported to the police um so pam tells emily that wayne has to come back home because he also got reported to the police and to social services um and they need to chat so wayne comes back and he demands emily to tell him about the shoulder injury and what is really going on with it but emily can't take it and she runs out of the house and he tries to get her back and to call her back Um, and to get her inside the house but she just runs away there's this one episode that comes up next where a crashes a car into their house um that's cinema question mark then we have an episode where a is trapping emily in the school and there's this whole scene where he's like spider-man tom holland's watch it watch it and he rescues emily from the school um it was actually really cool i'm just like playing back the scene in my head it was actually really cool um so he goes to visit ezra and he's talking about like look i'm really worried about emily can you maybe speak to her like see what's going on so allison then comes back this is season four and pam invites them to uh pam invites allison to dinner she says that she just wants allison to know that there is an adult with an ear that will be open to listen to her whenever they need it emily asks like why did you want this dinner and pam says that it's because in hindsight she thinks that emily had a crush on allison um before she went missing and that they needed some closure on that after the dollhouse there's this whole thing about emily going to like the shooting range and like she took her dad's gun because she wanted protection and pam got really mad at her because she was like what are you doing like this is not the way to you know protect yourself type of thing sarah harvey then kind of moves in with them for a little bit but this oh this kind of makes pam really overwhelmed because if something happens to sarah it's on pam and pam didn't really want that responsibility so nothing really happens until after the time jump now so we learned that during the time jump wayne actually died from a heart condition um he collapsed uh in the show sorry i forgot to say after he saved emily from the building and was diagnosed with a heart condition uh, but didn't tell anyone um and he passed away because of that um and emily visits his gravestone and it's a really emotional moment where she says she lost who she was and she lost everything when she was grieving and she lost her scholarship and she lost herself and she lost her job um but that she is gonna fix everything and she said that next to wayne's uh headstone so it was a really nice moment i think and some closure for her um sorry i forgot to mention this when we were talking about season two guys i'm so tired i've come back from work and i've been recording for nearly three hours (laughs) sorry my brain is fried during season two the one thing that made pam quite hated was that Pam actually got Maya sent away to True North and therefore was kind of indirectly responsible for Maya's death. Not totally, absolutely not. But um, she told Maya's parents about the weed that she had in her bag and that got sent her to true north where she met nate who therefore killed her pam i think had really good character development and although pam literally like invented homophobia um during the show her character developed really well oh sorry i forgot to say emily and allison end up having twins that's a whole nother situation yeah i think pam everything pam went through And everything Pam had to experience, I think, was needed for her character development. Because at the start of the show, she's very against uh, Emily's sexuality. But later on, she's very supportive of it. And I think it's all about learning. It's all about growth. It's all about character development. And I think that made her a good mum. She was open, open to learning. And she cared about Emily. 
and she just wanted to put her daughter first and she had to go through learning that her beliefs do not outweigh the importance of her daughter just being alive and being healthy um and I think her parenting definitely got better as the show went on in terms of Wayne um I think he was the best dad on the show and one of the best parents on the show he was Emily's support person when she really needed it she really really needed someone like that and I'm so glad she had Wayne there to support her and it was so good to see him putting his beliefs aside as soon as she came out because he realized let me not judge because Emily needs me right now as a dad as a human being and the entire show he was so supportive of her and he would always reassure her and tell her you're not messing up and you know you always come first and it's okay to make mistakes and you aren't average and you're amazing and I think Alice uh Emily really really needed that thank you for watching this video I'm sorry if the lighting or anything was off at any time this is my first time trying a projected thing so I'm open to advice if you guys want me to change anything I would love to hear your opinions down below um make sure to like and subscribe and I will see you guys in my next video bye guys